It's Mr. Lineski with chapter 25. We're looking at paired samples uh, or paired t-tests. Um, it's going to seem very similar to chapter 24, which is why I sort of put these notes together. Um, basically, it's going to look like we have two lists, um, but instead of having two separate groups, uh, the group is now going to be paired data. Uh, and that's because the data is now coming from either the same uh, group of people or the same subjects. Uh, commonly, this is viewed as before and after results. Um, it's used quite a bit in the medical field and professional health fields. Um, you could do it in business as well, where you sort of compare last year's sales to this year's sales, uh, things of that nature. So um, the important thing here is that we're now looking at the differences um, of sort of same subjects. Um, so. Um, because I have the same subjects, that means I'm not allowed to have the independence condition. Uh, the independence condition is going to be a little bit different, so um, I can't say that you know group one is independent of group two because I don't have two groups anymore. Um, I have one group, but it's not a one-sample t-test, uh, so instead we call it a paired t-test. Some old vocab from unit three. When we pair people together in an experiment, that is called blocking. When we pair people together in an observational study, it's called matching. Uh, again, we are focused on the differences uh, between the sets of data. Uh, so what that's going to end up looking like is we're going to end up doing list 1 minus list 2, storing it in list 3, and then sort of focusing all of our attention on that list 3. So let's take a look at the ho-ha and sort of see what goes on in our four box method here. Um, so the hypothesis is now looking at the average of the differences. That's sort of what we're concerned with. Um, so now we use what's called mu sub d. Um, so we kind of have this little d next to the mu to indicate that we're doing differences. Um, you do need to specify how did you calculate the difference. In most cases, it's the before minus the after. In some cases, it's the after minus the before. Um, so it really is going to depend on the problem and sort of what they're asking and how you want to go about setting it up. Um, our conditions are kind of similar. Um, random, as always, is the same. 10% condition, pretty much the same. Uh, the ones that are going to change are the nearly normal condition and the independence condition. So basically, uh, the subjects are going to be independent of each other, but you need to specify that it's the differences that are independent because our list that we're focused on is a list of differences. Uh, so it's not really necessarily the list of the raw data anymore, it's the list of differences. Uh, so most of our conditions have to be talking about the differences. Uh, so for nearly normal, uh, that's the one where we're, you know, we're given is the sample size large enough, and so all of that's still the same if our sample size is 30 or more. Um, but for the nearly normal condition, if we have to do a histogram, we only do one histogram now, and it's a histogram based off of list three. Um, because we now only have one list, list three, we're going to run a t-test on just list three. Um, and so it looks like we're just doing a normal sort of one sample t-test, but it's actually a paired t-test. And then as always, we get a p-value, we reject it, we fail to reject it. For confidence interval, we're still just going to do a t-interval just like we did with chapter 23. So let's take a look at an example problem. Um, for this problem, it says that one indicator of physical fitness is resting pulse rate. Uh, Ten people volunteered to test an exercise device advertised on TV um, by using it three times a week for 20 minutes. Uh, their resting pulse rate in beats per minute um, were measured before the test began and then again after six weeks. Um, results are shown in the table. Is there evidence uh, that this kind of exercise can reduce resting pulse rate? Um, if so, by how much? So most people, um, first off, when they say, if so, by how much, it's asking you to create a confidence interval. Um, when they hear uh, the exercise can reduce resting pulse rate, uh, we t tend to think of is less than zero, but we need to make sure we now specify, well, how are we calculating um, mu sub d? So if it's saying that this exercise can reduce my resting pulse rate, that means that we want our after to actually be the smaller number. 
because if it's reducing the resting pulse rate, the after results should be smaller than the before results. Um, so you can set this up as mu uh, of the after minus the before, or you can set it up as the before minus the after. Um, if I do after minus the before, and this is a smaller number, then that means my result, if this truly is smaller, should be less than zero. However, if I did before minus after, I would set this as my alternate. But we're just going to run this test here. Okay. So, uh, again, as always, just kind of write the uh, your null and alternate here. Um, again, I want to remind you why we're doing this is mu sub d instead of mu sub 1 and mu sub 2 because we technically don't have two groups anymore. We essentially have one group of people who are doing a task at two separate times, two separate time periods. Um, so for our conditions here, we actually aren't told random. Um, it just says 10 people volunteered. Um, so when that condition is not met, if we can't say these people are random because they're just volunteers, we can kind of assume that they are a representation of, of the, the normal population. Um, and so instead of saying random for that one, we'll just say that they're representatives of the population. Uh, 10 people, less than 10% of total population. Um, and so this is the part I have highlighted yellow is kind of the new thing. So it says, since our data is paired, and you should be specifying that in the conditions somewhere. Um, so since our data is paired, we assume that the differences between each person is independent. Uh, so I'm not saying that, oh, the people are independent of each other. It's uh, saying that their differences are independent. Um, if we check the histogram, the differences, it should appear roughly symmetric, unimodal. Therefore, conditions are met, run the t-test. So I want to show you guys how to find this histogram. Um, so in the calculator, uh, you would type in list one, list two. Um, so now over in list three, um, let me make sure I did this. Oh, so we did after minus before. So I actually in list three did list two minus list one. And then just hit enter. And again, that should auto populate your list. So now to look at the histogram, we go to second stat plots. Turn on our stat plot. Uh, we can look at list three. And keep in mind, we can either look at the histogram um, or we can look at the um, scatter plot. Ooh, I have a graph going on in there from an old test. Sorry. Um, so notice that box plot, kind of normal, little skewed. Let's see what the histogram looked like. Let me get rid of that. Um, so if we look at our histogram instead, that puts us here, zoom, stat. So again, it's not perfect, but you know, it's okay. And if you feel like, eh, that doesn't look great, you can always mess around with the zoom feature uh, and hit, you know, zoom out and kind of see what that does. Does that make it any better? Eh, for some of you, yes. For some of you, no. Uh, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just roughly symmetric. Um, so then our mechanics kind of look a little something like this. So remember, we are just running now a normal test, um, a, a t-test. So even though we are doing this special paired t-test thing, it's still just a t-test at heart because we have one group. Um, so we do have data. Uh, so now for mu sub 0, we're basically just going to put 0 in there. Uh, for our list, we have list 3. We are testing that that thing is less than 0. The differences are less than 0. Uh, and then again, just hit calculate. And so this gives us our statistics, pretty standard what we normally would write. Um, so again, for this degree of freedom, um, for this one, you can do n minus 1. So we had 10 subjects. Um, so for our degree of freedom here, it would be 9. Um, and then everything else kind of just stays the same. Uh, so our p-value again, low, reject the null. There's enough evidence. You know the drill. Um, and then for the confidence interval, if so, by how much? Uh, that's where we just run the confidence interval. Again, we run it as a t 
interval and then just do it on that list three. Alrighty, so that is it for chapter 25. Thank you for watching. I know it and now you know it.